Boston, New Jersey, Charlie Boston. And from Coventry, ladies and gentlemen, Errol Christie. At the weigh-in today, Boston scaled 11 stones, four and a half pounds. Christie, 11 stones, eight pounds. The referee for this contest, Mr. Mike Jacobs. The timekeeper, Mr. Ted Turner. So Mike Jacobs just making sure that the instructions that they've given him in the address room is okay. And there's the little tail of the tape very quickly. Southpaw. So he's certainly pulled his share of Southpaw's Errol Christie. He won't be too uh, bothered. Actually, Christie he wanted to wear his uh, white trunks for this one, but uh, toss of the coin by the Border Control Inspector, so they didn't want to clash, so he went back to his old gold colour. And Boston's been around in the sparring camps with the best. Marvin Hagler, Roberto Duran. He's now actually working with Sugar Ray Leonard in uh, Maryland. And he's a very cute customer. You watch this now. He's, he's not the easiest of opponents, I don't think. Trouble is, hasn't really been active enough. He's been a pro some time and only had the 15 fights, actually. I, one of the problems, uh, he just ran into a bit of lead poisoning, really, I think, but a shot in the leg during one of the riots in uh, Trenton, New Jersey, and I think uh, Uncle Sam had a word with him about that and he spent a little bit of time in one of their hotels. Incredible how they have this relaxed style, Jim. We're always on about that, at least I am. Uh, the Americans, you know, you, it's a tight match for him. He's away from home, and if he's trying to make this as though it's just another one on the card. Yeah, I think Boston's going to be one of these fighters who's far more experienced than his record suggests. He spent a lot of time sparring with the best. I think we can expect him to have a good defense, very difficult to hit, and probably be good at pacing himself, too. I think it looks already like quite a tough test for Christie. I can understand why Leonard has booked to work with him because he wants him to use the southpaw stance. Well, you can't impersonate Marvin Hagler, who can, but at least give him some idea. But certainly, I think Christie raised his game tremendously against Sean Mannion, and that does a great deal for confidence. He, Last year, he had a kind of in-and-out time where confidence was concerned, he admits it. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a catch-can contest, I think, until one can land correctly. manager wasn't too thrilled about uh, Christie coming in, uh, I should say the American manager wasn't too keen on Christie coming in at 11 stone 8, he thought the match was booked at 11.6, so he's having to give away nearly yeah, four pounds. Oh, what a right hand punch, I said it could happen at one stage but there's no way I thought the leading right hand like that would now Christie right on the bell and his legs buckled underneath him just as we saw in the Mark Taylor fight down early in the fight like that and it looks as though he's cut as well what a turn up for the book not a known puncher choo choo boss let's have a look at him replay jim there it is he's not a known puncher Reg, but that was a lovely punch bang on the target and uh, he, from the, from straight away the first round there it goes got him bang on the target and i think christy is very lucky the bell sounded when it did and let's have a look at it from the overhead camera. And in fact, it was the punch that called the cut because they hadn't been in any close position before that. And you really did drop him like a log there. Well, now, it's a big recovery time, isn't it? From Christie. He's been stopped, remember, by a light heavyweight uh, in the first round, Joseph Says, but uh, made excuses for that in 46 seconds, actually. Now, is Boston going to buy time or come out and throw some more bombs in the second? Well, I warned you from the off, this was no mug, the American. And uh, he's turned out a little hotter than I thought. 
There was a time when he got up to number five in the WBA ratings, Boston. And then, as I say, enforced inactivity. Now it's going to be a hard job, Jim, for Christie to take a little bit of the play away now from Boston. He's got to fancy his luck. Well, Christie had a difficult time trying to land in the first round. Uh, most of his punches were falling short, and the last thing he needed was dropped with the last punch of the round. It's the last thing his confidence needed. But uh, he's finding it difficult to get into range. It looks as though he's, he's nicked Boston over the right eye. But uh, that's just a little slashing punch. He's finding it difficult to land cleanly on Boston. A very cute customer right enough. Minute gone in the second. They often smile when they talk about in soccer. When the team scores with a minute to half time, and they all say, Oh, that's the worst time. Well, there's nothing like getting hit on the chin at the end of the first round. Well, he's getting all the encouragement from the crowd now, Chris. It's a brave enough show. Christ is not backing off Jim, which is saying something for his confidence. No, I think he's managed to, to put the, the knockdown out of his mind. He's trying to take the play away and uh, push Boston back, but he's still having trouble landing his big punches on Boston. Boston's very slick, the way he just pulls his chin out of distance at the last second. A little bit troublesome, the cut around Christie, uh, Christie's right eye. jab coming in there and he needs plenty of those now was that a flash in the pan or can this uh, American do it again so they breed them tough in Trenton New, uh, New Trenton New Jersey I should say I nearly said Newark that's where Hagler comes from And he's leading around the wild eye a bit more now. You can probably see that. So they've really got to go to work there then. Uh, on the both got the matching set. And uh, the London public and uh, Gary Davidson's working on that. There's some more stats about Charlie Choo Choo. And there's Jimmy Tibbs working there on uh, Christie's cuts, and there's the biog for him. three then of this turns out very explosive start between Errol Christie and Charlie Boston <laughs> well when Christie had to go up in class we knew that he was going to really be tested sort of a tactic should he adopt now, Jim, do you think? Well, Boston, to me, it looks like a right-handed southpaw. Most of his powerful punches are coming from his right hand. He hasn't done too much with his left. It might be an idea for Christie to keep his own left hand nice and high and pot shot with some right hands. He's not really having any success with, su success with single punches. He's going to have to move in and uh, let go some hooks with the right hand and think about defending with his own left hand, I think. But they're a very slippery customer.
Uh, just a loss of footing there. Got very untidy. Two falls and a submission by the look of it. He's all over the place, Christy. He must have tagged him there. I didn't really notice that, Jim. I just thought he lost his footing. What did you think? Yeah, I, I think he lost his footing and just couldn't get his rhythm back again. I don't think he was hurt there at all. But uh, you'll notice there that all the punches were coming from Boston's right hand. I think yeah, that's where the power one. lies. There's another one. When he catches Christie on the temple there, he does it. Just a little bit of a quiver. Interested spectator here tonight in Tony Simpson, who's... Uh, well, he must be rooting for a Christie verdict because he uh, wants to fight him sometime next year. It'll be a bit of a hot match, assuming he can overcome this one. A minute to go in this round. Just waving there, Mike Jacobs, to keep the punches up. has been on the wall a couple of times there now and we're inside the last half minute again but can he hang on this time it's, he was scrambling early on Jim and now we know why he was definitely hurt he hadn't fully recovered every good punch that lands in there on his chin shaking him up now I think he's in severe trouble well, it looks like he could survive this round anyway who knows? He's walking onto that right hand punch a bit. Oh, and another sounded like an orchestra to Christie as he really went back to that uh, corner there. I tell you, he almost held on the ropes as though he was looking for a quick exit for a second. Right. Don't worry about him. Oh, it's a hard job in the corner for these two to try and get uh, Christie to come back again. It's, we'll have a look at this replay now. There it is. Look, the long punch wasn't the right hand that started that he led with it. he dropped his hands there Boston so he knew he'd hurt Christie so quick word uh, from Tony Simpson with Gary Newman some fight this Tony but is Errol gonna survive I think he can because the kid looks like he's blowing up now he's just got to keep his hands high and keep out of trouble but can Errol really take a punch he keeps going down well the kid ain't uh, noted to be in a puncher he's a spying partner so obviously he's, he's not a threat to the world ratings and he gets tagged, so he's got weak legs or something. What do you think's going to happen? I think he's going to win the fight. Yeah, yeah. Round four. Well, let's uh, see if uh, Simpson's prediction's true. You know what they say, the jockeys are not always the best judges. But uh, I tell you, in, in, this, in this kind of fight, I mean, he's so full of running, isn't he, the American, that uh, your heart goes out a bit to Christie because he's not just not able to take the play away and stamp himself on this fight. Him. Well, Christie's been so badly shaken by some of these punches. I don't know if he has the natural strength or powers of recovery to get back where he should be. I'm looking at his legs now rather than his eyes uh, to see maybe if the strength's back in there and the coordination. He still looks a little bit shaky. I don't know if he has the powers of recovery that's required to get himself back into this again. Almost signaling the punches, Boston Jim really flicks out with the right hand lead, shakes himself out a little bit, gets a bit loose, and then just pops the left hand over. Yeah, well, Christie's waiting a bit for him. But you can see how difficult it is to, to catch. He's been making Christie stretch all the time, pulling him off balance, and then snapping back the counters. He is really like a typical sparring partner, but he still has the youth and the, the drive and some ambition of his own. But he's very cute, very cagey, and he's making Christie make a lot of mistakes. Well, he's certainly got some cheers for ducking cleverly away out of that one there, Christy, and he needs to. Oh, as I say, Choo Choo Boston was saying in the dressing room, uh, I'll be there, and when he comes at me, I won't be there, and it's turned out right. Low punches, Mike Jacobs really laying into him there. But they've got the bigotry foul proof protectors on and full marks to Boston he didn't even blink or complain
Well, Tony Simpson might be a bit like that, Jim, but this fella could be punching himself out a little bit. Well, well his pace is certainly dropped, but his, his concentration is still good. He's still looking for the openings, still uh, keeping his own chin out of trouble. follow up too much advantage there Boston I must say Christie's tried to get his work rate going a bit better here another look at the, uh, the cut no he's probably got a little bit too much uh, Vaseline around there Jimmy <laughs> well, the chips corner man saying get out there and pretend this is the first round start all over again takes a bit of doing when you've been under fire like that I said right at uh, the introductions as they were coming into the ring, this different type of opponent to Sean Mannion. Mannion, with all the all the heart in the world, would come at him and make it just a, an ordinary target. But this fellow's really a slippery coat. Think, Jim, you think Boston is uh, just flagging a little bit? Yeah, well, he's never boxed at a pace uh, for very long. I thought, uh, as I said at the start of the fight, he would know how to pace himself. I don't know if he's just doing that now, taking a rest. He knows he has the power to hurt Christie. Every good punch he's landed is shaking Christie. So maybe he's just biding his time, looking for a, a spot to bang that right hook over again. But Christie's taking the play away from him now, and Christie's the man doing all the work. And he's certainly got it to do as well. thing is if you've been in training camps for the likes of Marvin Hagger even with a head guard on I suppose these sort of punches are comparatively pat cake <laughs> I think these are the moments Jim when you realize how different the pro game can be you know it was a great amateur with 11 titles in the Guinness Book of Records etc yeah, and now well, he's cut and having to grip the teeth, it's, it's a hard old game. Yeah, amateur boxing and pro boxing, two entirely different sports, actually. But uh, Christie has always had plenty of courage and plenty of grip. Just a couple of times, his chin has maybe let him down at the, the wrong time, but he's never lacked courage, and he's showing it here because he's driving himself on. And uh, he's winning the, the previous round and this round because he's doing more work. He's not having a lot of success, but he's doing more work in Boston. Oh, and he's there it is again. I'm saying that. And he's standing off, he's really now tormenting him. We could do without that, at least Christie could. And you see there he's floundering again. This is the problem with Christie. The legs go on, on him very quickly. And again, right at the end of the round. And I'd like to get an opinion of Lloyd Hannigan. Well, I thought Earl was doing very well to survive. Very, very well. But he seemed to be messing around instead of doing his job by calling the fella to come on. I think he should be just be pushing him back, keeping the fella away, just keep jabbing, because getting hit like that, he's going to get stopped if he keep on getting caught with those long punches. Briefly, has he still got a chance? I think he's got a chance if he stay away from the fella. Don't, don't let him come to you. Push him back. And if he keep coming to Earl, I think Earl might be under getting stopped again. And he should just keep jabbing, moving around. Don't mix it. Okay. The fella is very strong. Lloyd, thanks very much. Back to you, Reg. Thank you, Lloyd. Certainly is an all-world champion here tonight with the commentaries. So there must be some anxious moments going over there in Christie's corner. Coming out for round six. 
and I must say at the start very happy for Christie's sake that he's been able to get this far Jim yeah well he's been shaking badly once too often see, see the thing is not, not too many fighters learn the art of boxing on the retreat as that was a good left hand from Christie there but that hasn't, hasn't shaken Boston at all it's a good punch and see Boston can box coming forward and they can box going back and this is what makes them uh, extra difficult for Christie whatever Christie does uh, Boston seems to be able to cope with it both had a good look at each other on the videotape, by the way, so they knew something about each other's styles. Yeah. On Boston's record, when he outpointed Dwight Davison early this year, that shows you what class he was, because there was a time when Davison was world number one, Tony Simpson looked at And then uh, he came off the deck in a flash knockdown in the first round to give Doug DeWitt a really tough fight. And DeWitt gave Tommy Hearns all the trouble he could handle. So, as I said, there's a real competent performer, this fellow. They can dig about the gymnasiums in America. It never ceases to amaze me after all these years, actually. See it? it oh, that's, that's the payoff, isn't it? So we can call Snap on that one because he really got his own back there, Christie, in the sixth round. A peach of a right hand punch coming through. Now that could turn the whole fight around. Now he's going to be Royal the Rovers if he can do it now, Jim. Well, that's exactly what Christie needed a lot of success. Just to build his confidence. In it. He still has Boston on the defence. Of another good clean shot is exactly what he's needing. A minute to go then in the six. Christie wants to get out of there and keep it at long range. He's never hurt Boston close up. He wants to keep it at long range. That's the punch. Oh, the uppercut is a beauty. He's got a good chance of stopping him, I would think. And this fella does not get stopped easily. I don't blame Christie biding his time there. The last thing he wants to do is punch himself out trying to win. Maybe he was eavesdropping on Lloyd Hunnigan there, who was telling him he's got to take the fight to Boston. And he has done. Christie's not taking full advantage. He should be trying some more right hands now. He's got Boston at the range. He wants some. Too late. They've got to pull this fellow together rather quickly now. That's uh, really surprised him, I tell you that. So here's the knockdown now in uh, in replay. And I think we're going to see the, the perfect shot. There it is. Bingo. Right flush on the face, Jim, really, wasn't it? That was bang on the chin. That was a good punch. Look at Boston's legs as this punch lands, if we can see it. Stiff and over he goes. That was a perfect shot. Lost control of his legs, but he did recover very quickly but the punch did take it so this is not a knockdown now this is a replay of the combination of shots that Christie was throwing there he really, he really fancied his luck then can you blame him because sort of well almost coming from nowhere in trouble round seven. round seven and now is the time for Christie to try and just put that into a top top gear now if he can easier said than done of course Getting off, getting off the deck like that is a bit of a show saver, isn't he? going to be a bit defensive now Boston now he's, he's a bit more inclined to use the perimeter of the ring <laughs> he 
is still a bit... Got to be wary of him, Christy. I mean, when you've been on the deck a couple of times like that, Jim, you can't take liberties, can you? Yeah, well, I don't feel Boss is looking for a points when he seems just to be keeping his eye on the target all the time, looking for a spot and uh, going for it every chance he gets. Chris has been doing more work than Boston over the last few rounds, and the knockdown will certainly help the point situation. So Christy wants to keep doing what he's doing, but do it nice and carefully, don't take any chances, and uh, keep Boston out of range, pin him on the jab. Showing a few of the old bumps and bruises of battle there, Christy. He was saying, Jim Moore, there's the right hand again. He just stepped in range with that. He got a bit nearer to Boston then. And if that had landed, he'd have been nearer to Boston as well. So inside the last half minute of the seventh, Oops, he's got to watch that. He must not be careless at all, Christy. He should really start firing punches with him. Instead of taking a few and then opening up. Still got a little bit of fire in his belly. He definitely looks as though he's flagging a bit to me, Boston. But uh, he has done for some time. So there's a quick fight analysis there about Christie knocking out top 20 of his 26 opponents. Uh, but he's been knocked out twice as well. So, uh, what word then, please, from Lloyd Hunnigan again. Well, Reg, Errol's doing the right thing by pushing the other fellow back, Boston, but now he's letting him come forward again. Oh, he just got to keep pushing him back because when he let Boston come forward, he's taking the play away from him and he's getting back into the fight. At the end of the round there, he was getting back into the fight. Oh, we've got to keep pushing him back. Don't let um, Boston come forward because he's going to get caught again. And I'm a bit worried about that because me and Errol's a pretty good friend. And I don't want to sit, sit be in the studio watching him getting knocked out. Chin down, concentrate, right? Don't let one another down. Right? Take the points off then, then let the right hand go. So round eight there, Jimmy Tibbs. Really blowing into Christie's ear. You know your career's on the line here. And Lloyd Hannigan uh, quite rightly saying he's got to unload and keep this man being pushed back most of the time. Well, I tell you what, Jim, if we could only all give him this advice now, he'd be winning easily, Christie, wouldn't he? That's um, one of these situations where it's easier said than done. But uh, Christie's got his act together. He seems to have recovered from the... The severe punches he was taking earlier on. He's, he's looking more business-like than the American, but uh, still nice and careful. Keep uh, pushing him back, taking the sting out of his punches, but don't take any chances. Well, that's a bit cocky defiance there. Oh, there it is again when he unloads with that. Watch that leading right hand, and he, when he turns it into a hook. Christie's really got to shoot the right hand over. That's it, but he missed with it. He's going to have a go again in the first minute gone in the eighth round. <laughs> Nobody looks good under punishment, Jim, but uh, Christy tends to just flounder a little bit, which is a bit worrying. Yeah, he just doesn't seem to have uh, the punch resistance that a middleweight needs. He has the courage, he has the heart and the determination, but now and again, I think the punch resistance is just uh, lacking. Oh, see the left hand punch that time. Get it to him with the right hand lead, overcame the left hand punch in the eighth round. And I tell you, the eyes are looking distinctly glassy from the commentary position here at ringside. 
with a minute to go. And it looks, I think, that Boston is going to do it in this round. And it's all over. Mike Jacobs decided in the compassionate way out. In the eighth round, then, a real upset for Errol Christie, who really was just cracked into the International Boxing Federation ratings at number 12. And this uh, very much a hot shot from Trenton, New Jersey. A, a cocky guy, but I must say the crowd are giving him the applause that he deserves because a real pro workman indeed, that one. Now, gentlemen, please, after two minutes, ten seconds of round eight, ladies and gentlemen, the referee has stopped the contest with Christie not in a position to continue. So Boston then the overhead the shot winner. in this replay now, which came two minutes and uh, ten seconds. And there it is. Jim, have a look at this action again. Yeah, well, just as, I, just as we were saying, uh, Christie's punch resistance let him go. It didn't look a tremendously hard punch, but uh, when you see the, the way his legs have gone and the way he looked when he stood up again, it's just that little bit short. And I think the referee did him a favour, saved him being knocked, uh, knocked out cold. But uh, not tremendous punches, but uh, look at the way Errol's going over. Errol, desperately disappointing for you, obviously. Oh, yeah, it's one of them things all a part of the sport, you know, you go through these phases. I've been through it now. You know, before, before, so let's see how it goes coming back again, yet again. The one thing people will be saying, though, I'm afraid, is can you really take a punch? Your chin looked a bit wobbly tonight, yeah, well, to say the least. You know, that my mind from the start of the fight wasn't right. My, fight, my mind wasn't in the fight. I mean, I was wound up because I just swapped my, sh my shorts and everything. Nothing went right from the beginning. So, you know, uh, it's one of them things. Can you take a punch, though, because your chin is not no standing up to take it. a punch when they get caught on the chin of a good, good left cross, which That's is it. what Charlie did give him. So, uh, it's as simple as that. Anyone can get knocked out. All right, Jimmy Tibbs, but can I just ask Errol to answer that one? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I could take a punch, but it's one of those things, you know, I got caught and that was it, you know? Charlie, is this chap going to make it? Well, I wish him all the best of luck in the future. You know, right now it's hard to say. You know, he had his chance in the spotlight and he did great. You know, I don't take nothing from him, I don't underestimate him.